Hey, Professor. How's it going, Hunter? Oh, it's going. Is there a uh, is there an element to solve family drama? Is there a what? Is there an element to solve family drama? I am not understanding. I'm just I'm just messing around. I just oh, sorry. And. <laughs> In order to be for me to get in on the joke, I have to kind of like be it, yeah. be somewhat knowledgeable. Yeah. And I got seven people in here. Looks like eight. How oh, nice. Good enough, ladies and gentlemen. How many of you are confused as snot about the descriptions of the graphing lab? That does not surprise me. Doesn't surprise me. Okay, first of all, this is almost an effort in, util in futility because how are you going to graph this stuff in the future? Michael, how are you going to graph things in the future? Online. Other, I'm sorry. M Michael. Yes. How are you going to, how are you, what are you going to do to graph something in the future? Um, I don't know what I would use that for personally. All right. If you have to graph something in the future, how are you going to do it? Um, I'd probably use, I mean, some graph paper. And <laughs> no, you're not. No, you're not. After you get done with this, after you get done. Oh, with yeah, that's what I'm saying. Yeah, probably never. You're no. never going to use it again. You're going to use, you're going to go to X. If you need to graph something, you're going to go to Excel type yeah. in the numbers and you'll be done with this momentarily. Unfortunately, they want me to go through this to make you, the idea behind this is so that if you do it by hand, you have more of a hands-on uh, working with the graphing so you understand graphing better. Yeah. I'm not in agreement with that, but I'm being paid to teach you. So since this is the lesson, we got to go through it. Okay. Uh, we're about two minutes in here and I've only got about half the class in here. And also I'm going to tap dance for another three minutes or so. Ladies and gentlemen, I just saw your, your last submissions. Guys, you cannot forget lessons from one week to the other. Your significant figures and your measurement readings were horrible. Okay? You got to continue that on. That, literally speaking, I am a, I'm a point thief. I take points away from you. Go back. You need to learn that stuff. You need to learn measurement readings and you learn, need to learn significant figures. Uh, I have a quick question. Yep, I'm here. Uh, how many significant figures is a triple beam balance good to measure to? Because I was doing it to two it decimal places. It depends. It depends upon the triple beam. Okay? Okay. The, one, the ones that you were given are uh, accurate to the hundredth of a gram. Some of you were giving it to me hundredth of a gram, but like you were giving it to me for like one of the two measurements. The other one you were just cutting off. The one, the one measurement I believe was exactly on the zero, zero. You got to include those zeros. Okay. The other I think thing I did. Uh, I might uh, email you like a screenshot if, 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 I, if I am able okay. to find it. I'll go over it. I'll, I'll go into the class and we'll go through your, your submission later. Okay. Thank you. The other thing you have to do, you have to show me all of your calculations. The very last calculation with the three solutions, some of you did not show me how you got the weight. You got to show me every calculation. I'm sorry, but if you don't show them to me, I got to take points away. 
So if it's not measured, it is calculated, okay? All right, I got a good 16 people in here. 17. Oh, Maverick. Maverick's good. <laughs> Should I bust him? <laughs> Maverick. Get on. Maverick. Hey, Maverick, you out there? Maverick. He's not. Oh, wakey, wakey. Maverick's not answering. Maverick, come on, answer us. Is he asleep already? Breathe, <laughs> breathe, sonny. <laughs> Look, I'm about to pull a Maverick and pass out from all this medication, so I'm okay. ready. <laughs> You're ready to pass out on I'm me? ready to pass out. <laughs> Yo, my boy Maverick learned through osmosis. He don't even look at it. I'm like, Maverick, I'm sorry. Come on, guy. Are you upset? If you're upset, please stay afterwards and tell me. We're just having a little fun here. He's not answering, guys. Okay. Was that directed to me? Because I could not hear you earlier. Ah, yeah, yeah, yeah. Maverick. Oh, whoa. Sorry. Maverick, it's nice to see you awake. <laughs> yes. We love you. <laughs> Thank you, guys. <laughs> Cute dog. Thank you. Okay, guys. Who's confused about what the crap that they were talking about today uh, in, that, in the discussion on this? Who's confused and who wonders why you were marked wrong for saying you, you did the highest minus lowest divided by number of boxes, you came up with six, you answered, the, you answered five, and you're wondering right now why you're wrong. Yeah. You know what I'm talking Me. about? Wait, what? Yes. There was one question in the pre-lab that had you to subtract the highest from lowest, divide by the number of boxes. The answer you came up with was six. And so what you did was you chose the closest number to that, which was five, and you were marked wrong. And you're like mad because what in the world? Why is this wrong? You got around it. Now, if you use five, you don't have enough graphing space. You got to graph all the points. And if you use five, if you round down that number to five, you don't have enough graph. I will explain it later today, okay? You don't have enough graphing surface, trust me. So, I'm gonna get into graphing. I did a wonderful job explaining this. I wish to hell I would have recorded my face-to-face -face lecture on Friday because every one of my students got this. So I'm hoping I remember something and I'm hoping I'll be able to present it in a similar fashion so you guys are gonna get it. Okay? So, from the current slide. All right, write these down. Write these down, each one of your graphs, each one of your graphs in the lab you're submitting. Each one of them will submit two graphs at least, maybe three, I believe it's only two though. If you don't have these five things in there, you've immediately lost half of your graph points. Each graph needs to have a title that can be something as simple as y-axis versus x-axis. Uh, you're doing absorption versus concentration. You are doing the uh, mass versus volume. You are doing the ln of k versus 1 over t. Each, each graph needs to have a title at the top to tell me what that is a graph of. Each axis needs a label. <clears throat> if you're getting mass, if you're measuring mass on one axis, volume on the other, it's gotta be labeled. Then you need to have the units on that axis defined. You have to have a scale in place. In other words, you have to have little numbers 
under the boxes. You have to have, they don't have to be each box, but somewhere in a regular pattern, you have to have a scale so you can determine the value per box. And last thing, the whole reason you're doing this highest versus lowest, dividing by number of box things, you need to cover 70% of the graphing surface. The reason you're covering 70%, the more of the graphing surface you cover, the more accurate your graph will be. So, if we start at zero, zero, you are losing a whole bunch of your graph. Everything from zero, zero, all the way to your lowest X value and your lowest value, Y value, that whole area would be lost to you. So you are not, not starting your graph at zero, zero. What you are going to do is you are going to start your graph at a point that is at your low value or slightly below your low value. This is to make sure we're not wasting graphing surface. So in order to do a graph, we need to be able to graph all the points. So the first thing we have to do is we have to determine the range of what we need to graph. Simply stating, we need to subtract the high value and the low value. High value minus low value is your graphing range. Does that make sense, guys? Next, we're going to need to determine the scale. All a scale is, is the value that each box represents. And basically, we can determine scale by dividing the range by the number of boxes. This is why we're doing that formula. Highest minus low value divided by number of boxes. Does this make sense now? Are you understanding why you're doing that crap now? I have some data points here, okay? These are the data points. Now, uh, okay. If we are dealing with the graph paper that you have in your report, that graph paper has an X number of boxes of 15, a Y number of boxes of 20, but those are the big boxes. Let me go and show you kind of what I mean. I'm gonna stop share for a second. Let me go back hopefully to, no. Okay, so if we go into the graphing lab. If I'm looking at a piece of graph, of graph paper, and I do not want you to use anything but this graph paper. If I count the number of big boxes in the X direction, there are 15 big boxes in the X direction. There are 20 in the Y direction. Trust me on that, guys. We good with that? Yes, yeah. sir. All right. Mm, no, I don't want to do this. So if I get back to my PowerPoint and I'm gonna to need to go backwards. So I have 
values of volume and I have values of mass. Now, you'd like to be able to graph things easily, wouldn't you? Uh, yeah, please. So as a general rule, you will have control over one of the values. The one that you have control over is the independent variable. More likely than not, your independent variable will be plotted in the x direction. The independent will be your x axis. The one that is in the one that is in the y is called the dependent variable. It will generally not increase in incremental fashion. And the one in the y direction is called the dependent variable because it's dependent on the independent variable. So I have some values here. And pretty much, if you look at this, I'm pretty much going up by threes until I get to this last one. And I don't know why I did that, but it, that's the way it happened. So I'm pretty much going up by three. So my volume is going to be my independent variable. My mass is going to be my dependent variable. So I'm going to work on first the x-axis, then I'm going to work on my y-axis. My high value was 45.9. My low value was 32.5. So I have to be able to graph 13.4 milliliters. Now, my x-axis has 15 big boxes and the 15 big boxes each have five little boxes in there. So, to get my scale, I'm going to take my range and I'm going to divide it by my number of boxes. Remember, my range was high value versus low value. So my range is 13.4 milliliters. I'm going to divide that by 15 boxes. So literally speaking, if I start my x-axis at 32.5, and I make each of my big boxes exactly 0.8933333. The last line would be at 45.9, which is my high value. Is this easy? Is it easy to graph something with increments like this? No. No. All right, to solve that, I have two things I can do. I can fudge it a bit. So basically, wait, wait, sorry, sorry. So I can fudge this a bit. So it's starting at 32.5, a convenient number. No. Is, that e is it an even number? Uh, no. Okay, so I can fudge it a bit. Now, you got to understand, when I'm fudging it, I can lower the number, but I can't raise it. Okay, remember, my, <clears throat> my first value is at 32.5. If I raise my value, that means I'm starting at 35. Can I plot 32.5? No. So I can lower it. So I can yes. lower it to something like, what would be a nice round number? 30. Okay. I'm going to fudge it a little bit. So I am going to fudge this a bit. Okay. Why is this doing this to me right now? So 30 seems a reasonable number, right? All right. 
0.893333 is not convenient. What would be convenient? One. Okay. One milliliter per box. So let's see if all the points can be graphed. I am starting at 30. Okay, if I'm starting at 30 and I have 15 boxes and each box is one milliliter per box and I have 15 boxes, the range that I can graph is 15 milliliters. If I'm starting at 30, what would my highest value that I can graph be? 45. 45. Anybody recall what my high number was? It was like 45.9. Can I graph it? No. I cannot graph it. Wait, so, why, can't, why can't you graph? I'm sorry. I, I, I lost on that one. Because right. the highest value is 45, and we have a data point that's at 45.9. It exceeds the graph. If we start at 30, okay? If we start at 30 and our scale is one milliliter per box, right? Yeah. We have 15 boxes. So I'm taking the, just do your dimensional analysis. If I do one milliliter per box and I have multiply that by 15 boxes, that means I have a graphing range of 15. If I'm starting at 30 and our range is up to 45, our high value is, is beyond this. I can't graph it. Oh, okay, okay, that makes sense. So I have to do something. I either have to fudge this range, this scale, or I have to do something else. What else could I do, guys? Extend it. Extend my graph? Yeah. No, they got graph paper. No, I don't want you putting an extra little box out there by hand and drawing the five little, no, no. Do it by five? Three, five seven, milliliters eight. per box? Yeah. Me too. Okay, if I did it by five milliliters per box, all right? No, that's not a good, point 0.5, I'm sorry, point 0.5. Point um, 0.5 per box? Yeah. All right. How many box? I'm going to stop this for a second. Stop share because I want to go in here and I want to take this. Hey, what about by twos? No, 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 one second. Okay. okay. This is where I want to be. And graphing. Okay. All right. Somebody just suggest why is this doing this? Are you seeing the are you seeing the graph not the seeing the slideshow now? No, I'm not seeing a graph. I'm seeing the slideshow. Are you seeing the slide? Great. That's what I want you to see. Okay. What did somebody suggest? Somebody suggested. So I suggested we go by 0.5. So then when you multiply each box by 0.5, it would be a 15 increase instead of a, it would be a 7.5 um, increase. That, that would be worse. Oh, never mind. I'll take my words back. All right. If you did, if you had a total, total graphing surface of 7.5, if you started at 30, add 7.5 to that, you're only at 37. So, so by Professor, taking the range, question. by taking the scale lower, there's even less of the points that we can graph. Are okay, you so seeing that? That's my, that's my confusion, Professor. So are we trying to stay under the 49? Or like, that's, that's why I'm kind of a bit confused now. We want right. to go over it because right. we want to keep our data. Okay, this, do you, are you seeing the data? Is 1.5 a clean enough number to use as an increment or should you stick to like a whole number like one or two? Okay, I, I'll get to that in a second, all right? Just one second. All right, we're looking at our data. I need to explain this 
to who st who is not understanding? Well, uh, unfortunately, me, sir. Who's me? Gaith. All right, Gaith. We start. Remember, we started at thirty at one milliliter per box. That made our range fifteen plus thirty. It made forty-five. Right? Yes. So. We need to graph up to 45.9. That is beyond our graphing surface if we use the scale one milliliter per box and we start at 30 milliliters. Are you understanding that, Gabe? Oh, uh, yes. All right, now important. This is important for all of you. Somebody suggested instead of we using one, we use 0.5. Did that expand our ability to graph or did it contract it? Yeah, I think Terry said that, but it, it, it makes it smaller. It makes the graphing surface, it makes it smaller, but there's less that we can do. That is why, ladies and gentlemen, when you are dealing with this and you're trying to fudge these numbers, you can never round the scale down. Do you remember I illustrated this by that point? Where you, where you were in the pre-lab, you did high minus low divided by number of boxes, you got six. This is why five is not a good answer. Five decreases the amount you're able to graph. You have to up that always when you're changing the scale. You have to go up. You have to round up. You can never round down. You guys are forgetting something though. You guys are forgetting something. We're starting at 30 using 15 boxes at one milliliter per box. And you keep on messing with the scale. Is there something else you can do? Can we just start at 31 instead? If we start at 31, remember 31 is still less than our first data point. Correct, ladies and gentlemen? So can we do the just go by twos? If we go by twos, OK, you have 15 boxes, right? Yes. Yeah. OK. so. You have a total graphing surface of two times 15 or 30, correct? So you would be going from 30 up to 60. Starting at 30, if each box is worth two milliliters, by the time you get to the last line, it's 30 plus another 30, your final line will be 60. We have to, we have to graph it completely. Like we can't, we can't leave it under. We can't go over. It has you to be done. To cert, you need to use 70% of your graphing surface. Okay. Okay. All right. Under that scenario, you've got from 45.9 up to 60 milliliters that you're not using. 45.9 is your high value. So if you go by two milliliters a box, you're not using from the 45.9 milliliter range up to 60. That's about, that is about a third of your graph. Now it's even more than that. Yeah, it's about half the graph. It's about half the graph that you're not using. Again, we need to cover 70% of the surface. So one of the things that we can do, we can change the scale, but that scale really, that scale looks pretty good to me. Okay. And I'm, I, my scale almost made it. The only, I was only off by 0.9 milliliters. So if I just 
instead of starting at 30, if I start at 31, if I've got one milliliter per box, then from 31, my last line would be 15 milliliters plus that, my last line would be at 46. And I'm bogging you down in numbers. I know that that's what's happening here, guys. When you are dealing with this, you can either play with the scale or the starting point. All right. In this instance, our graph almost made it. So it makes sense to move the starting point and keep the scale at the same. So if we start at 31, again, our graphing range is 15. 15 plus 31, we would be able to graph out to 46 milliliters. 31 is still lower, lower than our lowest value. 46 is higher than our high value. This works. Questions, ladies and gentlemen. Sorry, can you remind me what the original lowest value was? The original lowest value was 30. We said that we started our, I'm sorry, are you asking the low value of our data or a low value of our graphing point? The data. Data was 32.5. Okay, so then we are good. Okay. Now, does this cover 70% of our graphing space? All right. What aren't we using? In the low end, the first point we're going to graph is at 32.5 milliliters. We're starting our graph at 31 milliliters. So we're not using 1.5 milliliters. But remember, we got one milliliter per box. So if I have 1.5 milliliters, again, using my dimensional analysis and multiplying that by one box over, over one milliliter, this means in my lower end, I'm not using 1.5 boxes. Let's look at the high end. My high end, I'm able to graph to the point of 46.0 milliliters. My highest uh, point that I have to plot is 45.9. The difference between those is only 0.1 milliliter. Again, multiplying that by one box over one milliliter, I'm not using 0.1 boxes. I add when I'm not using 1.5 and 0.1, I am not using 1.6 boxes out of 15. That's well above 70% of my graph. Again, this last part, you don't have to deal with this. You really don't have to deal with this. You can make your, make your attempts and see how far it graphs out and see if it will cover 70%. My whole thing is, I don't care that you're using all this. This is all meant to help you. What I care about is this 70%. And I'm going to see where your high end values, where your, where your graphing points end high wise and low wise. And I'm going to figure out how much of the graphing surface you're using. If you're not using 70%, 10 points off. That's a that's a 20% of your graph, graphing points. Now, let's look at our Y range. My high value, the range, my high value was 89.3. My low value was 62.5. I subtract the two of them and I have to be able to graph 26.8 grams. Again, the y-axis has 20 boxes, and each of those boxes is divided into five little boxes. Again, to get my scale, 
I'm going to divide my range by my number of boxes. So I'm going to get 26.8 grams, divide that by 28 boxes. I come up with 1.34. What this means is if I start my x-axis at my low value and make each of my big boxes exactly 1.34, my last line would be at 89.3. Again, my increments of 1.34, are they convenient? And is starting at 62.5 convenient? Somebody yeah. suggest a starting point. What if we just went down to 62? You could do 62. What would your increments be? How much would each would you want each box to be? Um, one. You can never go low. You can never round your scale down because if you round your scale down, you are not, you're going to run out of graph. Right. Um, then we'd have to pick two, right? What if you did one and a half? What do you think? One and a half or two? One and a half. Two. Okay. All right. If we start at 62, how many boxes do we have? 20. 20. So if we start at 62 and we go by two grams a box, that means we have a range, a graphing range of 40 grams. That means I have the capability of graphing up to 102 grams. Right? Yes. My high value is at 89.3. Yeah, it's over. So is two going to be too high a number, do you figure? Yeah, it won't cover 70%. So what would be the next best choice? One and a half. One and a half. If I do one and a half, one and a half times 20 is going to be 30. Yeah, one and a half times 20, it's going to be 30 grams. So if I start at... 62, and I add 30 grams to it, the highest value I can graph is 92. If I do 89.3, does that seem reasonable? So again, I can fudge it. I fudged it down to uh, 60, okay? Instead of 62, I fudged it down to 60. And I started my grams per box at 1.5. If I am starting at 60 and I'm using one and a half grams per box and I have 20 boxes, this means my high value I can graph is 90. Again, my low value was 62. My high value was 89.3. The, where I have my graph, low value of my graph and high value of my graph, it can plot it. Sorry, where is the, I'm trying to find my arrow key. There we go. Wish I can get a visual. <laughs> okay, I'm trying to find out where I was. I'm sorry. At the low end, I'm not using two and a half. Remember, my low value is 62.5 that I need to graph. My graph starts at 60. So I'm not using two and a half grams worth, all right? Remember, it is one and a half grams per box. So if I take 2.5 grams times one box over 1.5, I'm not using 1.6, one and two thirds of a box. On the high end, I'm not using 0.7 grams. So I'm not using about 0.5 boxes. So in total, 
by choosing this, I'm not using about two boxes out of the 20. Again, well beyond 70%. All right, now, in case you don't know how to plot the points. All right, we have said that my X axis is one milliliter per big box. We have to realize that the big box is worth five little boxes. So each time I go over one more increment of that little box, it's 0.2 from where the big box started. Y-axis, it's 1.5 grams per big box and one big box times five little boxes. So each little box is worth 0.3 grams divided by a little box. If I start my X-axis at 31, the first point I need to plot is 32.5. There's a difference of 1.5 milliliters between 32 and a half and 31. I take that one and a half milliliters times one little box for every 0.2 milliliters. I move over seven and a half little boxes to the left of 31. That's where I start my X value. My Y value, my low value in Y was 62.5. I'm starting at 60, so that's two and a half grams. I'm taking two and a half grams times one little box over 0.3 grams. I have to go eight and a third boxes up from the starting point. If I do that for each one of my points, these are the little boxes to the right of the starting point of 31 milliliters. The second column here are the number of little boxes above 60 that I'm raising it. Are we good with this part? Hey, Professor, I don't mean to interrupt. I just, I'm just trying to understand one main point. So the 62, is that given in the question or the problem? 62.5 was the first Y value. So that's what I'm saying. So that's given in the question. That's given in the data, yes, Gabe. Okay, so if I do that, and we're gonna go slideshow right here. If I do that graph, this is what I am, what I have plotted. Okay, that point, this one, this one, this one is another point in there somewhere. Oh, that one, that one, that one, that one, and that one. Now, after you plot these, what is going to happen is you are going to get points above and below the line. What you want to do is you want to kind of average those points out. You want to average those points out and draw a line so that you are averaging the errors that you made when you were measuring. You want to get as many points above the line as below the line and you are drawing your points, okay? Now, we're talking about the equation of a straight line. That equation is gonna be equal to, y is equal to the slope times x plus the y-intercept. By definition, the slope is the change in rise over the change in run or the change in X divided by the change in Y. All right, never, 
never use data points to determine your slope. There are two reasons for this. If you're gonna use your data points anyway, why do the graph? You've just wasted a good two hours of your time drawing this silly graph. The second reason, remember I said you were trying to draw a line between these points. Drawing a line, what it does is it corrects for measuring errors. So what you want to do is you want to get two points and you want to get the points where the line intersects two major lines of your block. If you look at this, my line goes right through what I'm calling two major lines there. Are you seeing that ladies and gentlemen? You want the two major lines because it's easy to figure out. All I have to do is drop this down and I realize that that's gonna be 38. I go over here and that is going to be 73.5. Very easy to tell. I don't have to do any calculations at all. But sometimes if you look at this graph, there's at no other place do I have major lines that get intersected. So I have to use the little boxes. And this one, you want it so it goes through the very corner of an intersection of a box. So I chose that one and that works out to 32.8 and 63. So I've got my two points to determine my slope. These are my two points. I'm gonna do the change in rise, the Y value. So I'm gonna go 73.5 minus 63.0. I'm gonna divide that by the change in the run, the 38.0 minus, this should be a zero, sorry about that. 38.0 minus 32.8. I do that math out, eventually I get to 2.01 grams per milliliter. So I've got my slope. Now I need one more thing to determine my equation of my line. If I have this, then simply speaking, all I have to do is take one of those points, plug the y value of that point into y in the equation, the x value of that point into the x, and solve for the number, and the number is going to be the y-intercept. There's another way to do this, okay? And that is, you simply, I want to see, I want to see if I get this right. Yeah, let's see, where's the slope at? You can do it. Another way, somebody remember 63 and 32.8. I'll try my best. Okay. I think this way is a little more confusing, but confusing. it will work. Damn it. If you do, y minus 63 is equal to x minus 32.8. I think that's it. Is that it, guys? Ah.
Professor, I do want to say I appreciate the visual given. Thank you. Thank you, Keith. What you do is you substitute in for Y, you do Y minus the Y value. For X, you do X minus the X value. And whatever this turns out to be is going to be, so just solve this, Y minus 63 is equal to 2.01 X minus calculator. It's negative 65.928. We're gonna go with that, okay? And simply speaking, you add 63 to both sides. You get Y is equal to 2.01 X minus 2.9. Either way, you will come up with the same answer. The only reason I even mentioned this, is anybody familiar with this way as opposed to the way I did it? Yeah. It doesn't matter. Yeah, literally speaking, the first semester I ever graded these papers, I had students that were solving it this way. And I'm like, this isn't, what the hell, what, what are they doing? And I was just like, no, red, red ink everywhere. Until I got about, I have one more paper to go out of like 23. And I had to realize I had to go back and yeah, it kind of made sense. Yeah, this would work. And so that's the only reason I even mentioned this anymore. I think this is easier. I think this is easier, but this will work as well. So we have the equation of our line. Okay. Now, Say we have our graph here. Say we want to, we want to know what something weighs if it is 43 milliliters. If it is on the graphing surface, that's pretty easy. All you gotta do is find each big block is worth one. That's 42. 43, I'm gonna go straight up to where this meets the line. And then I'm gonna take it over here. It's gonna weigh what looks to be about 83.7. Okay, if something weighs 78 grams, how much how much, what is its volume? All I gotta do is find the 78 on my Y scale, take it over to my line graph and take it, drop it all the way down. That is about one little box to the right of the 40. That's gonna occupy 40.2 milliliters. Are we okay with that? So if it's on the if it is on the graphing surface, find the value that you're given. You're going to move over on the x-axis to where that point is. You're going to go straight up to where it meets the line, and then straight to the left if you're looking for the y value. Otherwise, if you have the y value, take it straight over to where it meets the line then straight down and read what the X value is. But what happens, what happens if it's beyond the, if it's beyond the uh, uh, graphing surface? I wanna know 
when something weighs 110 grams, what its volume is going to be. Can I do that? It's not on the graph. What you have to basically understand is that this graph, this line doesn't end there, but keeps on going. And the line doesn't end there, it keeps on going. So if I realize that, I have to realize that the equation of the line is going to continue as well. So I've got my equation of my line. If my sample weighed 150 grams, that's my Y value. All I got to do is plug my 150 grams as my Y value. That's going to be equal to 2.01 grams per milliliter X minus 2.9. I add 2.9 to both sides, divide by 2.01. Then that's going to weigh seven, that's going to have a volume of 76.0 milliliters. Hey, sorry if I'm really asking. So basically, volume is always going to be your x, x. axis, and then grams is going to be your y. Yes, because you decided when we started, when we it's started, when we started. We decided, we decided that, that so, I'm getting an echo. Somebody please stop. It's driving me nuts. Probably you too. Okay, when we started this off, we decided that we were going to raise our volume increments. Uh, we're going to raise our volume increments in a systematic way. That way it's easier to graph. Okay, if we're controlling the if we're controlling that, we're going to put that on the X value. So that's why the volume was chosen to be the X value. It's okay. the independent variable. Similarly, guys, if I had 1.50 liters, how much would it weigh? I've got to, I would take the, again, the same equation. I would have to change the liters in the milliliters because my slope is in grams per milliliter. So I'd multiply the 2.01 grams per milliliter times 1500 milliliters minus 2.9. And that would give me a Y value that would weigh 3,010 grams. So professor, I just want to clarify some of my confusion. So basically, if it's in liters, we're, we're plugging it into the formula and we're multiplying. You have to realize, okay, okay, you have to realize what your units are. And my graph, my mass was in grams, right, Gaith? You see, I've got it labeled in grams, mass in grams. My volume is in milliliters. So when I got the slope, my slope had a label of grams per milliliter. If I give you a value of X in liters, I have to change that to milliliters in order to cancel out the milliliters in the slope. Questions, guys? Do I need to go through the uh, the, the uh, report with you? Do I need to go through the report? I would say, I mean, no. Okay, fine. No, I guess not. You tell me, guys. I'm here for you. And I appreciate that, Professor. All right. Oh my yeah, well, I mean, should, probably. I don't know. Uh, Listen, I'm not. I'm, I'm not gonna lie, Professor. I may not have the brightest light bulb in the room, right? You threw me off with the with the graph. I mean, it looked pretty dark over there. <laughs> what looked pretty dark? His lighting, sir. Oh, damn. Um, Thank your you, math Terry. is taking my hairline even farther back than it already was, sir. 
<laughs> I believe this class has taken a good 10 years off of my life. <laughs> and you only have and you only have three months to go, Sophia. I, I'm grateful for that. Thank you. No, Terry. I'm <laughs> <laughs> uh, guys do you have to use all this bullshit math no no well you know in organic in, in organic chemistry i'm hearing that we do but like it's going to be a lot easier because at that point i think we're going to be using like like you said excel and different things like that you're not and, you're not going to have to graph in organic you will have to graph heavily in chem too in chem two, in chem two, what they do, the reason chemists use graphing is because if they manipulate the equations enough, they can generally get two things they can measure. And if they figure, manipulate the equation, they can get the equation of a straight line. Yeah. If they get the equation of a straight line, then they can get the slope, which is something that they can solve for. Yep. Terry, does your little comment have something to say with your math abilities? I mean, I'm decent at math, but the way you explained, like, I thought I knew slope. And then the way you explained slope, I'm like, okay, y equals mx over uh, plus b. And then you took it all the way over here. I was lost. Yeah, I'm not going to lie. I was lost too, Professor. I mean, it was a bit sophisticated, to be honest with you. Me too. Um, but when it okay. sorry, but when it when it comes, yeah. to, we're just going to use the y two minus y one, right? And that's yeah. it. Okay. Yeah, that's. I showed you the second equation. Either way, we'll get you. Okay. The thing about it is, you cannot use data points. If you use data points. You are, you, why bother graphing? There's no reason to graph. If you're going to use the data points, you've got the information right there. There's no reason to graph. All right, come at me. It is 8.30 now, come at me. What, what are you not understanding? Everything. What you do you not understand? Right out of my mouth, professor. You literally took the words right out of my mouth. All right, okay. Bottom line, what I want you to do, you have to understand that you have data. That data has a range that you have to be able to graph. The range is the high value minus the low value. Does that make sense to you, Gabe? Okay. So you're going to have the high value minus the low value. That gives you the amount that you have to graph. Now you got to look at what do you have to graph it in. And that's when you look at your graphing surface and you count the boxes. So when you count the boxes, that is going to give you your scale. Because once you divide the range that you have by the number of boxes, you're going to have the value per box. Does that make sense, Kate? Yeah, I can see that. All right. Now, you always have to start your graph at a number lower than your lowest data point. You have to end your graph at a number below your highest graphing point. I'm not saying anything that's stupid here, am I? All right. Now, what you just have to realize is you just have to figure out 70% of the surface. Okay, okay. The more of the graphing surface you use, the better your graph will be, the more accurate your graph will be. That's why I want you to use 70%. So you can, you can, if you've got a pencil and an eraser, 
You don't have to do my math. All you got to do is say, okay, I did my high low value. I'm going to get a rough amount for my scale. I'm going to start it below where I have to start. And I'm going to just go. And you can write out the numbers. And then you can look. Okay, you've written out your numbers. Okay, my high value is over here. My high value is over here. That looks like it's about 70% of the area. Okay, I'm going to use it. Or uh, I'm only using half of my graphing surface. I need to lower my scale so I get more of the graph covered. That's all I'm asking. If you don't need to do that, that math portion, I told you when I was going through it that you didn't really have to do it. That makes sense. OK. Use, use what you need to use. These are tools. Hell, when I was doing it, you know what I would do? I would just pick a scale out of thin air. And I would go ahead and do my graph, do all my points. Ah, this doesn't work. Take my eraser, pick another scale, throw it up. Ah, this isn't working. And I'd eventually wear a hole in the paper. So can you do a trial and error? Go for it. Do a trial and error, but you're going to be wasting a whole lot of graph paper and a whole lot of lead. Come on, I am here, guys. Do you have anything else? Um, I mean, if, if we run through the, the um, lab, is it probably going to take too long? No, I can go through it real quick. I just have to figure out where it's at. There it is. Okay. Guys, again, you don't have to stay. Oh, before I do that, just let me do this real quick. Quickly, guys, I need you to come on so we can let people go. And let others stay on here. Okay, Gaith is here. Davila, I think I saw you. Davila. Davila? Yeah, I'm here. Thank yeah, you. I'm here. Monica, I saw. Terry's here. Sophia's here. Apple Grace? I'm here. Hunter was here. Leandre? Leandre? Here. Maverick, you still awake? Tyler. Still awake. Aya. I mean, dear God. Here. Guys, this had to be the most boring lecture I've given so far. And this is the most boring lecture I've given so far. And you're still awake, Maverick? Okay. So <laughs> I, I got better sleep before. Aya. Here. Jeff. Here. Grace. Here. Katie, Mateo. Mateo. Faith. Faith. Here. Jennifer, here. I think I saw Victoria's here. Michael was here. Philip. I'm here. And Miriam. Ma Mariam. Here. Okay. Finest kind. All right. Peace. I'm gonna go. If you don't, if you don't want to be here, you don't have to. I've taken roll, so. Preview. Okay, now. Some of this stuff is not going to make some sense because you're not going to have the data right off. Wait, so can we go if we don't need additional help? Yep. Okay, thank you, sir. I told you I've already taken. Okay. You're doing mass versus volume. You got to figure out what the independent variable is, what the dependent variable is. What's the scale you chose for the x axis? 
What's the scale you chose for the y-axis? And guys, you're going to need to upload this into the, you're gonna need to upload this into the uh, results section. Uh, what points did you use for the line of best fit? Do not use data points. Show how you calculated the slope. Okay, the slope of the line represents one of those values. The y-intercept represents. Now there's a second set of data. Graphing, graphing of the hours studying versus the exam grade. Again, you're gonna to have to do a second graph. Is the relationship direct or indirect? Okay. <laughs> if something is direct, you have a straight line. If it is indirect, it is curved. Keep that in mind. Closest value to the slope. What's the closest value to the y-intercept and what's the equation of the line? Now you got to use the equation of the line in the graph. You're plotting hours versus grade score. So if it's on the, if it's in the graph, you can actually plot it, use it using the graph to figure out what the final answer is, or you may have to use the equation of a line. Same thing here, this gives you the other value. Okay, I'm sorry, the first two you'll be able to do just using the graph. Third one, you're gonna to have to use the equation of a line. And that is it. Okay, thank you for, for doing that, Professor. No problem. Anything else, ladies and gentlemen? You just wanna say I'm gonna to have to put on a brave face, Professor. Okay, they are gonna get through this. This is the only time you're gonna ever have to do this. Okay? Any other questions, guys? In your does your lecture match your labs or sometimes no, you're never you are never going to I'm never going to go over this in lecture. Okay. This is this is unique to a uh, lab. Okay. But cool. as a general rule, my lectures are following. Or my lectures are before what we're having in the lab right now. Okay. All right. Uh Good evening, everyone. Hope you all have a have, great time. Take care, guys. I will see you again next Thursday. Gaith, if you're having problems with this, Gaith, read through this thing. Take care, Maverick. Read through Thank this. You. If you're Bye. still having problems. Bye, Monica. If you're still having problems with it, let me know, okay? I'm teaching this again on Thursday. And if you do a little bit of work between now and then, and you can, and if you have questions about what you have, by all means, email me on Thursday. I will send you an invitation. Okay? Awesome, thank you. No okay, problem. Thank you. Hunter, same thing for you. All right, you have a good night, all right? Have a good night. Have a good night.